Okay, today I'm working on an LCD TV. There's a model number right there. That happens to be the inverter board number. Anyway, this TV came in here with some sort of a shutdown problem. I noticed as soon as I hit the power button, which is on the side of the main board right here, you'd look through the sheet metal holes and you'd see the backlight come on just momentarily. And so my first thought was, okay, I, I see the backlight trying to come on and shutting off. So I probably have an problem with my inverter board. Well, at first I tried the neon light trick where you take the neon light and you hold it next to the output wires and next to the transformer as well as these little capacitors right here. And I noticed I only had an output on one side of the, uh, on one of the transformers. There was only power coming out. Now that kind of interested me because this appears to be a series circuit where you've only got one wire coming out of each side here. Um, in other words, one wire coming out of this set of transformers and one wire here and it feeds right into the uh, to where your cold cathode fluorescent lamps are in, behind the sheet metal here. And so I figured uh, I figured if I saw something on this side I should see something on this side but whatever the reason was I, I didn't. I only, I only saw an output on one side. So my first thought was okay uh, you know maybe I've just got some bad caps right here. The caps check good. I rang my transformer it ran just fine. Uh, it, uh, I tried to double check the final output transistors and make sure my driver transformers were okay. And uh, it turned out that uh, when I unplugged this plug right here and I tried to turn it on again, I had this thing just barely pulled out, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I heard an arc noise, which, which told me there was power coming out of here, but it was being drawn to ground somehow. And so I began to wonder if there was an arc over problem. Uh, where your cold cathode fluorescent lamps are behind the sheet metal here. I've seen things like that before where you can get a an arc over problem. It, it will take your high voltage and just draw it right to ground. And I wasn't sure what to think, so I, I tried making a dummy load with some resistors. I was reading in one of my training manuals that you could make a dummy load with, uh, I think it was between 100 and 150,000 ohms resistance, and you'd get an idea whether there's a problem or not. So I put this in series. Sure enough, my resistors got hot, but the cold cathode fluorescent lamps didn't come on. It's understandable when you've got that much resistance there, but the resistors did get hot, so I started thinking, okay, it, it might be that I've got a, a problem with my lamps. I'm, I'm just not sure what to think here. And, um, you know, just I, I went on eBay. I happened to find another guy selling the same inverter board, 23 bucks. I thought, since I don't know for sure for that price, I'm just going to go ahead and order the board. Well, guess what? Put the new board in, same problem. And I wasn't sure what what to think. I, I began to think in terms of the uh, cold cathode fluorescent lamps being bad again. So I I did a little experiment. I figured, well, if there's a short to ground, maybe I can just add just enough resistance by unplugging this here, putting a resistor in between and uh, perhaps that will allow the the lamps to come on and stay on so I tried I made up a little harness that I was able to plug on between the two putting a resistor in there I tried 50k I tried 100k no luck I even tried putting a cold cathode fluorescent lamp in, in between here and here I didn't uh, still didn't have any luck but then for the fun of it I tried doing the same thing on the other side I I made a little harness up you can see the alligator clip here. Oops. I better be careful. I've got, basically what I did was I hooked this uh, cold cathode fluorescent lamp. I hooked it up so that one side of it's now going, it's in series with, with this. In other words, it would be the equivalent of me unplugging this and I put the cold cathode fluorescent lamp in between. And uh, anyway, I turned it on and guess what it turns on now and it stays on in fact let me uh, let me give you a little demo excuse my unprofessional video here just alone in my shop doing my thing again it's kinda of hard to do this all myself okay I guess I should be able to hit the power button now without blowing anything up I've got the lamp hanging on a string you can see now now it comes on stays on you can see the backlight peering through the holes here. And so I'm guessing there might be some sort of a short to ground or perhaps the 
the backlights are so bad they become highly conductive now and it's drawing too much current. This, oh, oh boy, I'm going to kill myself here. Anyway, this, this lamp here is adding just enough resistance to allow the circuit to come on. Now, I don't know why I wasn't able to get it to come on by uh, substituting a resistor in between there. I, I guess it's, it's really about knowing the exact resistance you have to have to trick the this feedback circuit into coming on. But I'm going to see if I can't trick this TV into making the cold cathode fluorescent lamps come on anyways. I remember uh, Justine's book mentioned uh, tricking the bypass circuit, or the feedback circuit rather, so you can get it to come on even if it senses there's a little bit too much current being drawn. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm going to end the video right now, and if I'm successful, I'll go ahead and add it to the video. Uh, if not, well, you'll know what happened. Thanks for watching. Well, just for the record, I did try doing the bypass, and it turned out that the lamps were flickering so bad, I really didn't want to uh, send a TV out to the customer with a bypass. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. Well, I didn't know I'd be adding any more to this video. I just called the customer. I told him the prognosis of the TV, something going on with the backlights or a possible arc over. And sure enough, there's an arc over problem, all right. There's your problem right there. That was causing the inverter board to shut down. It looks like uh, somebody took a welding torch to it. I'm going to try to clean that up and see if I can fix it, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, very scary operation to pull the TV down to this level, and uh, I made sure that the customer agreed to not hold me liable if something goes wrong at this point, because I really don't normally like to tear TVs down to this level, but I, I smelled something burning, and I figured there was probably an arc over problem. So there we have it. Well, in order to fix this problem, you really have to get rid of all the carbon. So I've chipped away at this here best I could. I think I'll probably take my Dremel tool to it also. Carbon is a conductor, so really I have to get rid of all this car carbon next to this uh, electrode here. This, this holds the lamps in place, and so obviously it was arcing over here from here through the plastic to the ground. And the same thing happens in distributor caps in cars. Every once in a while you'll see a, a, what they call a carbon track. It sort of forms itself uh, from the high voltage and so anyway, I'll, I'll seal it with uh, electric tape, many layers or something. I'm going to put the screws back in. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. I'll take a video before I'm done here. Well, I cleaned all the carbon out of there and I packed it full of this uh, resin stuff. It's made for fixing boats, something a friend recommended. I'm going to put some tape on there while that cures. Uh, in the old days, it was fairly common for flyback transformers to arc over because they had such a high voltage in them. And a friend of mine mentioned that he tried different glues, and sometimes they didn't last. And this is the best stuff he'd found. It's not necessarily designed for what I'm using it for, but because my friend mentioned having such good luck with it, that's what I've got. Boat resin put in there, and I put a little electric tape underneath there, too. Now this stuff, uh, if you ever buy it, it uh, comes with a resin and a catalyst. And I guess you mix it one, 1 to 5 ratio. And I think it's going to be fairly fast drying. Anyway, um, hopefully it'll work as good on this as it did on flyback transformers. Well, believe it or not, that fixed it. Ended up buying an inverter board that I didn't need to buy, but it was uh, not that expensive and good experience. So for what it's worth, model number of the TV, you saw what I went through to fix it. If you do happen to need an inverter board for one of these TVs, there's a number for it right there. And uh, hope you found that enjoyable.